We are at 10,000 dead Palestinians. How many will be enough? I also, one of my colleagues just said all of them. Wow. Utterly reprehensible, not necessarily surprising. In modern America, coming out of the Florida State Legislature, mildly surprising, should be worse. Uh, that was Florida State Representative Angie Nixon. She had a resol resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, was passionately speaking about the devastation that we've seen there. Here's an extra tragedy to throw on top of that. The 10,000 number that uh, Representative Nixon referenced there is now well over 11,000. And the Secretary of State of the United States thinks that that is probably an undercount. So tragedy on top of tragedy. But trying to do, to the extent that a Florida State Representative can, a little bit of, a little bit to help calling for a ceasefire. And that was when Republican Representative Michelle Salzman butted in and said all of them. 10,000 is not enough, 4,000 children is not enough. Every single one of them needs to die. And said that in a, a person is giving a speech, the cameras are on, the mics are on. It would be reprehensible even if they thought, if, if Representative Salzman thought that they would get away with that. But to say knowing there was a good chance that it would get picked up, believing clearly that it would help you for it to get out there, well, that is truly reprehensible. Now, we have a little bit more from Representative Nixon um, reacting to what you saw in that first video. One of my colleagues said all of them. One of my colleagues also stated that this is gonna dry up their fundraising if we vote on this resolution. I also want that, like that's what we've become in this state. That's what we've become in this state where we don't care about innocent babies that don't even get the opportunity to blow out their first birthday candle. Yes, we don't care, or at the very least, the vast, vast majority of the people in the room where the representative was speaking did not care. And not caring can come in a variety of different forms. Most would not be willing to say where it could be picked up on camera, all of them should die, literally calling for genocide. But there's another way that you can not care. You can have a representative calling for an utterly non-binding call for a ceasefire that will do nothing except send a signal that perhaps peace would be good and it can get only two votes. That's another way that a state legislature can show how little they care after that passionate speech. Virtually everyone voted against that. We'll have more about this, including more from Representative Nixon. But Ravana, what do you make of that? Yeah, what she said was despicable. But all I could think of while I was hearing it is she's just saying the quiet part out loud. Is her position that different than the position of the Biden administration? I would argue it's not. Joe Biden, when asked, you know, if there was a chance for a ceasefire, he said, definitely not. No possibility. So for the Biden administration, 10,000 dead civilians is not enough. You know, upwards of 4,000 dead children is not enough. They've shown that they do not care. And I can't see any indication of the number that will be enough. So from the outside looking in, it feels like considering their continuing endorsement of what's happening in Gaza, their continuing material support, but also another important aspect of this is the rhetorical support that they're offering in the media and press conferences and official statements from the White House, from the State Department, that this is Okay, no matter how much lip service they pay to, well, it's sad that innocent civilians will die, but that's what has to happen in this case is is what their position is. And her position is also not that different from members of the federal Congress, right? We had Brian Mast say that there's no such thing as an innocent Palestinian civilian. We had Max Miller say on TV, live on TV, that we're, we are going to, use the term, we are going to turn Gaza into a parking lot. You know, Lindsey Graham has has been calling for the destruction of Gaza. These are people explicitly calling for genocide. And I'm not seeing the White House policy push back against that in any meaningful way. I mean, we can give humanitarian support to Gaza small amounts, but as long as we keep giving Israel the bombs that creates the need for the humanitarian support, we're not doing anything meaningful.
shameful. It's disgusting. And the one bright spot of this is that so many Americans, the vast majority of Americans, I mean, 80% of Democrats, but a majority of Americans want a ceasefire. And we need to continue to use our voices, continue to attend protests if you can, continue to go to ceasefirenow.com, I believe it is, demand a ceasefire from your elected officials, because at some point, they're going to have to break. And they're going to have to listen to the, the constituents that sent them there because our voices have been so loud throughout this. We just need to continue to raise the alarm and keep the pressure on them. Listen, the fact that only two people voted for this and one of them was Angie. Well, let me say this first, full disclosure, Angela and I are extremely close and we've worked together on several campaigns. So I should have mentioned that before I start giving her praise, but she deserves it anyway. Um, and this is not the first time she's went viral for standing up to her colleagues. The nasty part, I think Rihanna said it perfect. The nasty part is we, this whole country is comfortable with the idea that we should kill all Palestinians. And whether we say it or not, our policies are supporting that. I mean, our president jumped on a plane and went to a war zone to hug Benjamin Netanyahu in the midst of it. And you want to add another tragedy to the numbers that you said, the 10 becomes 11,000 and majority of them are kids. Majority of them are kids. And I, I'm and I know innocent life is innocent life, but a child, a child, that many children have been murdered. And I think this this idea that America sitting silent um somehow cleans our hand. You know, we, we are absolutely dirty soiled by this incident that uh that's happening right now. This has nothing to do with uh the conflict between two governments. We're talking about civilian populations and not not caring for them. When you bomb a refugee camp, when you bomb a hospital, when you bomb an ambulance, you can't tell me you're, you're concerned with citizen life. Even if one Hamas person was in that refugee camp, what about all the other folk that are not? And I think America's tolerance for Palestinian pain may have reached the equality level with black people. And that's not a damn good place to be because America is extremely comfortable with the death of black bodies here. Yeah, I, look, I'm, I'm glad, by the way, that you reminded us, Ravana, of the polls, because sometimes, like, you have to try to remember that just because so many of the most powerful people in the world are utter bloodthirsty sociopaths, that doesn't mean that most regular people are. I mean, most regular people, unfortunately, thanks to American media and American education, are way too predisposed to a variety of different forms of hate. Um, but you're right, people do want this ceasefire. People around the world want this ceasefire, and most countries have voted in the UN in favor of that. Unfortunately, here, that's considered a really risky thing to push for, unacceptable. You can come up with some other like way of saying it that's a little bit lighter, that skirts around the issue or something. But there are just way too many people in positions of power that are very comfortable with far more deaths. I cannot imagine having you know, been a person with some influence and sitting through the utterly devastating initial attacks and then weeks and weeks of bombings and an ever mounting death toll and thinking what we need now is more blood. But for some reason, there's something about accruing power and money that makes that seem utterly natural. Um, by the way, just, just a slight, it's ceasefirenow.org, but people should definitely check it out um, and, and hopefully put some pressure. There, there are those that are trying to do that. Um, they are also, generally- Sorry, ceasefiretoday.com as well, uh, both oh, of them. Oh, there you go. Yes, um, I wanna read just a couple of comments from Representative Nixon um, who tweeted, waking up and all the emotions are hitting me from yesterday. Florida Republican legislators literally calling for the death of innocent people on the House floor. Some of my Democratic colleagues in full agreement with them. Well, look, we, we, don't, we don't know if they want the deaths, but they don't want the ceasefire because they voted against it. Not just the Republicans, the vast majority of Democrats. Um, Another of my Democratic colleagues stated they were more concerned about 80% of their fundraising drying up if they were forced to address the humanizing of Palestinian lives. Randy Fine called me evil and whipped the Republican caucus to stand up and turn their backs on me. I have never witnessed so much hate in real life in real time as I did on yesterday. Republicans and Democrats working together to ostracize someone simply asking for them to see the humanity in innocent human lives. And it's devastating that Representative Nixon had to go through that. She's not alone in that. I mean, the fact that our government, our federal government, which can't get anything done these days, can come together to, to censure uh, Representative Rashida Tlaib. Um, why wouldn't that be a part of this story considering our government in 2023? Why wouldn't we have expected that to happen? But anyway, look, technically, 
as one more update, and I'll give you guys a chance to jump in. Uh, the Secretary of State earlier today did say far too many Palestinians have been killed, far too many have suffered these past weeks. We want to do everything possible to prevent harm to them and to maximize the assistance that gets to them. To that end, we'll be continuing to discuss with Israel the concrete steps to be taken to advance these objectives. Here's the thing though, words have meanings. So when you say we want to do everything possible to prevent harm, what that should mean isn't we want to do like a little bit of talking and that's it. And literally nothing else. We want to pretend that we have no tools in our toolbox to exert influence, to use leverage. We've got nothing. We can dispatch Blinken to say something that sounds kind of nice. And he's only doing that because they see the polls, particularly amongst younger Americans that find Biden's position, the Biden administration's position to be reprehensible. So I mean, that is just like, yeah, the words are good, but they mean almost nothing coming out of Anthony Blinken right now. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? I, I Listen, I, I think you're spot on. I, I, here's here's a tragedy of it. I think, you know, to say that we're, we'll continue to talk with Israel is is trash to me. Stop sending money to Israel till they stop bombing people. There you go. I bet you. I bet you Netanyahu will listen immediately. New word for y'all. Immediately, if we stop bombing people, if and when I say we because America has a hand in it. This is our resources spent to bomb innocent people without a strategy other than make Gaza a. a Parking lot. That is the strategy. Death of all, all in that space. You can't think that you have a strategy to clean out, to be precise and 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 use precision on this day when we celebrate veterans who sacrifice so much. You hear veterans screaming, "This is not what it is. This ain't the look. This is a bad look for America and our claim to be the defender of democracy all over this world." Absolutely. And just to add on a little bit to that, you know, uh, Israel is essentially a client state of the United States. It is able to operate because of the uh, money that it receives from the United States, because of the military support that it receives from the United States, but also because, as I mentioned earlier, the rhetorical support that it receives from the United States, the defense it receives from the United States, uh, you know, with, within the UN, the political power there, but also the way that they portray the actions be, uh, that are happening to the media. Joe Biden could right now end this. He could call in Netanyahu and say, all right, this is enough, you're done. He's done it before. He did it in 2021 during the last major siege on Gaza. He can do this. So every time you read leaks, supposed leaks coming from the Biden administration saying that they are anxious because they feel like they can't control Netanyahu. Just know that it is a lie to cover Biden's ass. If he wanted to stop this, he could stop this. And that's his State Department that is claiming they care about the lives of innocent Palestinians. Again, it's just words as they see this continuing campaign of pressure being put again put on them by activists demanding a ceasefire to try to obfuscate the responsibility and the very real role that he and his administration is playing in carrying out this genocide. Yeah. And by the way, that should be enough reason for people to support this. But also bear in mind that that sort of ceasefire would at least open up the possibility that some of the hostages could be could be saved. That's mm-hmm. supposed to be one of the one of the main reasons for Israel's strategy. Um, you know, and, and who's to say if any of the particular you know transfer plans that have been put across are trustworthy? But at least it's a possibility, and and that right now is is simply unattainable. And the continued bombing also puts those hostages at risk. So there's a lot of civilian lives um, on the line. And, and I just want to remind people because I am I'm so glad that a lot of people in America, you know, have really stayed tuned in and caring about this topic. We are not a country, we are not a people that often thinks much about foreign policy. Um, and I and I'm glad, especially that people care so much about civilian deaths. I think that that should be centered in our talks about foreign policy far more. But I want to remind people that like there is a long tradition of Americans not giving a damn about civilian deaths until way too long. I mean, this is utterly devastating. But how many years of civilian deaths in Syria because of our bombing in Iraq? Mm-hmm. Uh, in Yemen with the military aid and the weapons that we like perfectly comfortable for years going by. And mostly because the media doesn't talk about it. I understand that a lot of it's apathy and ignorance. Like the one standout, I guess, is a little bit with Israel and Ukraine. 
Um, and then that's that's about it. For the most part, Americans way too willing to let a lot of civilian casualties just go ignored. I hope coming out of this, like coming out of the Iraq war, people you know maybe were a little bit more questioning of wars in general, that we just try to center saving as many civilian lives as possible in future conversations. But that remains to be seen. Thanks for watching the video, guys. We also love it if you hit the join button below because that makes you a member. And members allow us to be independent, honest. We could be as progressive as we want, no corporate media influence. And that's all because of you guys. We love doing the show with our members. Hit the join button, become one of the Young Turks.